Whenever possible, you should record to a metronome or a click track. This will ensure your performance is on the grid. That makes it possible to do things like quantize and makes copying and pasting much easier. I found a lot of people have trouble playing along with just a basic beat, especially the annoying sound of the metronome. So here's a much nicer idea. If you have time, make them a basic drum beat. It'll be much easier to follow. Here I've loaded the TTS-1, and I'll select channel 10. In general MIDI, channel 10 is always drums. I'll set the bank to be the preset rhythm. Then I can get out the patch and select the standard set of drums. Now when I open this up in the piano roll view, we'll see the names of the drums listed down the side, which makes it nice and easy to find. I'll just use a kick drum and a side stick to make a basic pattern. I'll close the piano roll view and back at our main screen, I'll right click on the clip we just created and turn it into a groove clip. And I'll roll it out as long as I'd like. We won't be needing the metronome during recording, so I'll click it off here. I always found a basic drum beat was more musical and easier to follow than the metronome. Speaking of drums, let's look at the session drummer. A lot of people ask me how you use this thing. I'll call up one of the preset programs here. You can load different patterns into the session drummer and you can change the drum sounds. Now I'll play that pattern here. Sorry, the audio is a bit scratchy there because I have Snagit, the video capture program, running. Wow, I must have picked one of the longest patterns in here. Now I'm asked a lot, how do you get that onto a MIDI track? Well, here's your answer, this little music note right here. It was difficult to describe in text, but now I can show you. We'll grab that and we'll just drag it onto our project. I don't care where I'll drop it. I'll just close Session Drummer in the synth rack and I'll slide it into place now. With my snap to grid set at one measure, it will always land at the first of a bar. I'll slide this down to the Session Drummer's track where it will play. Now let's open that in the piano roll view where we can view and edit the notes. You can completely edit the pattern from here, even add more fills or whatever. And since it's already a groove clip, we can roll it out as long as you'd like. You can treat it just like any clip with copy paste and drag and drop. There are times you need to freeze a synth. This will render the material into audio and temporarily turn off the soft synth. This frees up processing power. Simply right click on the track and select freeze and freeze synth. If you're having trouble playing a project with too many soft synths running, this is the answer. The session drummer is on a combined instrument track here I'll right click and split the instrument track, so then we have our MIDI track and our audio. You can see them both here. In the synth rack, you also see a freeze button here where you can freeze the synths or unfreeze them. When you unfreeze the track, it takes the audio away. If for any reason you'd like to save it, just slide it to a different track before you unfreeze. There have been a few times I've needed to do that. In your Options, Global Options, if you look at the Editing tab, this is where you can set your crossfades to be automatic. I'll click this on and show you what I mean. I'll highlight this audio clip and press S on my keyboard to split it. I'll slide this piece over here. Now notice when I overlap it, it automatically crossfaded that. If I show the layers here, you can see each one is faded. You can also readjust those fades manually.
If you right click here, you can select the different types of curves that are available for fades. Here I'm going to add some reverb to this track. I'll begin by right clicking in the effects bin and grab a reverb to use. I'll call up a preset and adjust the amount. Now that will work fine and some effects should be placed right in this bin. But with a reverb where you're going to use it on more than a few tracks, there's a better way to do that. We'll set up our reverb in one of the auxiliary sends down here. You see we have master, metronome, and effect send one. If you'd like to add one, you can right click and insert a stereo bus. Give it a name, I'll call this whatever. Then I'll move back up to my audio track where I'll insert a send and I'll select the new one we just created called whatever. That's quite easy to set up a new send. Now I'm going to use the one that was already here called Effect Send 1 and I'll insert the lexicon reverb right into that send. Again I'll call up my preset and I'll leave this at full strength. Back at my audio track I'll turn on that send and I can adjust the amount here. And I can send as many tracks as I'd like through that reverb.